Today, we'll learn how to work with and set up policies within Cloud Radio. Policies are especially helpful because they're the building blocks of many reports, including the automated QBR. Additionally, they give you and your clients quick insights into how their infrastructure is doing. It's important to note that a lot of the information feeding these policies will come from the Cloud Radial agent. Be sure to check out our video on understanding and installing the agent before you move on. Otherwise, you may not have enough data to play with and understand this section. To start, let's navigate over to Partner on the left-hand side and click on Content. Once we're in the Content area, we'll scroll down to locate the Policies section and click on the Sample Policies list. If you're just starting out with Cloud Radio, you'll already have this list preloaded, but we'll need to make a copy before we can make any changes. To do that, click on the Save As button at the top and rename it whatever you like. For this example, I'll go ahead and leave it as the copy. Whenever you're ready, click Submit. In our new list, you'll notice that each and every policy has been changed to unpublished. This is our sandbox mode to change everything as we like. Let's take a look at one as an example so we can see how they work. I'm going to look at third-party antivirus here at the top. Within an individual policy, you've got a couple of customization options. Let's start by taking a look at the client description fields. You can change the name, description, and recommendation for each individual policy. This will show up on the client side policy dashboard, as well as some select reports you can pull. Moving on, there's also testing. Modifying this field will change the passing percentage to consider this policy a success. Or, said another way, we're just saying that 100% of all machines must have third-party antivirus installed to consider the policy a success. Should the policy fail, we can even set up alerting to notify you or the client every time it does. Note that it'll only send one until the alert has been resolved. That way, it won't bombard you with notifications. In the risk scoring section, you can even change the category of each individual policy. Rather than explaining specific violations of the policy, you can bundle it under a security category. If you click on the category dropdown, you'll see several options you can choose from, but you can always add your own by clicking on the Edit Category button on the right. In the Risk Score section, you can set a risk score for each individual policy violation. Risk scores are eventually tallied up and presented to the clients. Scores of 100 and over will automatically be flagged as red and in danger. Scores of 99 to 10 will be flagged as yellow as a warning, and anything under that will be flagged as green with no attention needed. You can also set your scoring methodology from either each occurrence or any occurrence. Once we're happy with our setting changes, we can go ahead and hit Submit. It's important to note that not all policies are built exactly alike. For example, let's visit old technology. You'll notice a lot of similar fields that we just saw in the third-party antivirus, but you'll also notice that there's an additional field called required parameter. Certain policies exist with additional parameters that help dictate whether the policy will be successful or not. In this specific example, we're saying that a processor of 36 months or more is considered old. For more information on what these parameters are, check out the article I've linked in the description. Once we're happy with our changes, we can go ahead and click Publish at the top right to make our changes live. And once we're happy with our policy list and it's live, we'll need to assign it to our clients. To do that, click on Settings at the top and either manually subscribe companies by clicking on the subscriber tabs and taking off each individual company, or if you've got your group set up, you can click on the Edit button at the top right and drag and drop applicable groups. Once you're good to go, you can go ahead and click on Submit. So far, we've learned how to create and manage policies, but let's take a look at what the client sees. Start by navigating over to Compliance on the left-hand side of the Feature Sets and clicking on Policies. Here, we can see the policy is live in the context of an actual client. You can sort your policies by asset or by category by switching between these two tabs at the top. If you've just downloaded agents and want to pull information immediately, click on this Sync button at the top right. Otherwise, the information will be pulled once per day at night. Clicking on this download button will download an Excel spreadsheet that you can also use for reporting purposes. However, we can also look at this data in terms of a QBR. To do that, let's head over to Partner on the left-hand side and click on Clients. I'm going to be using the Digital Efforts MSP client that I'm looking at right now. I'll go to Reports on the right-hand side to pull a QBR, and I'll pull my custom policy report QBR that I built prior to this demo. Now let's take a look at the PDF that it's created for me. Looking at this PDF, we can see that it's got my custom logo, my table of contents, my stoplight report based off of the policies we created earlier, and more information on the individual policies along with risk score and more. 
When structured correctly, Cloud Radio's policy reports are a quick way to get insights and prove value to clients month over month. Be sure to experiment with them and work on combinations that work for you and your clients.